morning. I am, it's Thursday morning. This video is gonna go up on Friday. I wanted to sit down and as you guys can tell from the title of the video today, film something a little bit different because I have been vlogging this weekend, this past week all the way up until yesterday and watching back the footage I realized that I you guys are gonna know me and you're gonna know that I'm not feeling 100% and I'm not necessarily saying that I'm feeling particularly terrible right now but I am feeling bad enough that all the vlog footage really showed that and I've been pretty transparent about mental health on my channel. It is something that's really important to me. It is something that I have struggled with for a very long time. I've had OCD my entire life and that's like the thing that's really rearing its head at me recently. But the last couple of days from Monday until today, I have been very anxious. And I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about what I do to try to nip that in the bud because if you have anxiety or you have OCD or you have anything like that, you can kind of tell when it's coming. You can sort of feel it in your gut a little bit and I mentioned this in part of the vlog and I decided that today I was going to sit down and just film a chatty like what I do to stop it, what I do to try to calm my mind, to not let it get bigger than it needs to be and that is something that I feel like a lot of us forget sometimes and in this video I kind of want to go over society as well so if you're not really into mental health if you're not really into that kind of thing this probably won't be the video for you so recently I have been really under pressure and under strain at work. I have been under pressure and under strain when it comes to the successes and the drive and the goals of my friends. And I feel like a lot of people can really feel that. You know, you look around, like a lot of my friends are married, having babies, have good careers, and I am doing good for myself, but I wouldn't say that I'm doing as well as they are. Obviously, I'm in the middle of getting a divorce, totally fine, like that is something that I chose for myself, but you know, it's still hard. I've had the same job for four years that is steady for me, and I do enjoy it. But you know, I looking at what my friends are doing, even when it comes to booktube, a lot of my friends, their channels are really growing, and I am so happy for them, and they're really involved in a lot of things, and they're doing a lot of personal projects. And a part of me, and I feel like a part of everyone, wants to go, go, go to try to achieve what people around them are achieving. And for a long time, for the last like, you know, two years, I have really been doing that. I've uploaded every single day, every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for a very long time. And obviously my life got a little chaotic the last couple of months, and I did sort of fall off of that a little bit, but <clears throat> consecutively, for two years I have been doing this and I have been involved in a lot of reading groups, I have been involved in a lot of like readathons, I have been trying to be more involved on Twitter and Instagram and then I have my job which is now five days a week, used to be four days a week but has still always been at least 40 hours. And it's really exhausting. But the thing is, we're kind of told that if you're not doing that, you're not striving to be your best and you're not doing the best. And this is very much so a dog eat dog society. And recently I realized that my mental health and everyone's mental health is way more important than being top dog. And I try to channel a lot of that need to do a lot into just loving and supporting my friends and finding happiness and joy through their successes and then only really worrying about my shit. So only worrying about what I'm doing, what I'm capable of doing. And finding that balance is a little bit hard. Like, what do I want to do? How much time do I want to devote to certain things? And what part of my life am I willing to sacrifice to get to those things? And recently it has been sleep, it has been spending time with people, it has been, you know, like the unwinding time that I usually have. I have not really been focusing on those things. So today I wanted to sit down and go over with you guys kind of what I do to make sure that I am getting enough sleep, getting enough of the unwinding downtime that I need and one of the things, the thing that I really wanted to focus on today is my morning routine because 
your morning sets your day. So if you are waking up, if you're staying up super late to get projects done and you're waking up really early, chances are you don't have time for the little things. One, you started your day off with not enough sleep. Something that I have really been focusing on is getting at least eight hours of sleep, trying to get at least eight hours of sleep. My schedule's a little wonky from this past week, but I have an app on my phone. Well, I have a Fitbit, which is my watch, and then on my phone within the Fitbit app, there is a sleep calculator. So it actually shows you how much time you spend in heavy sleep, light sleep, REM, and how much you are awake. And I will show you guys what that kind of looks like. And that has been so invaluable to me. And I've been reading up a lot on sleep. So before I go to bed, about an hour before I go to bed, I will maybe put on like an audiobook or a video but I will turn off the screen so I'm just listening to it. I try to be screenless and I will read. So I'll read a book, I will read sometimes on my tablet but I always have blue light filter and like the nightshade thing that they have for it, like the bedtime shade I think is what it's called on my Kindle and I will try to unwind and I make sure that my room is not super super warm. I make sure that my bed is really comfortable. That is something that's really important to me just to, to get enough sleep. So like I said, I have an actual timer that reminds me, hey, it's time to unwind. It's time to get off the computer because if I'm sitting at my computer, I will work on my computer for hours. I will work on my computer up until the moment that I lay down to go to bed. And that's not okay. You should be in bed kind of getting ready. And that can include taking a shower. That's really good if you aren't getting sleep. If you take a shower before you go to bed, it tricks your body into kind of cooling down in a way and showing it that it's time to go to sleep. So that's another thing that's really been helping me. Now when it comes to waking up in the morning, I am one of those people who didn't really think about my body in terms of what sleep really does for me. So what I do first thing in the morning is I will wake up and then I always try to stretch. I have been going to the gym a lot recently. I think I'm on like my 14th consecutive day. Today I'm going to take a rest day. Today my brain and body really needs it. So I'm going to take a rest day. That's really important if you do incorporate exercise. But one thing that I always do is I stretch first thing in the morning. I just kind of get my muscles going and it kind of releases endorphins a little bit obviously stretching isn't something that's really going to like get your heart going but it definitely like gets the movement started and then I will make my bed that's another thing that's really important to me I read a study where a gentleman said that when he has people come into his office he's a therapist obviously but when he has people come in and they say they're having really bad anxiety or you know any kind of flare-up for some mental illness he says go home and commit to a week of eight hours of sleep, no tablets, no nothing before bed, getting off your phone, getting off the personal projects and just really getting to sleep for eight hours and then waking up every single morning and making your bed. I have been making my bed for the last two months straight and I have to say you can really tell when I don't make my bed the kind of mental state that I'm in. So the first thing that I do is try to make my bed so that when I come home there isn't a mess and I know it's just your bed but it is a mess that you're coming home to. This obviously doesn't apply to everyone. And then the next thing I'll do once I've made my bed is kind of lay back down and read for a little while. Sometimes when I first wake up, I'll read. I'll take time to just lay around and read. I have another, I have an alarm on my, my watch that wakes me up. And then I have another alarm that is a, set for a half an hour later that I know to actually get out of bed. So depending on how much energy I have in the morning, I will just lay in bed for a while or I'll get up and immediately make my bed and then lay back down and just kind of read or, you know, work on something, something that isn't too much work. You don't want to be starting your day off with work right away. Waking up and going to bed should be a gradual thing. It should be a very selfish thing where you're really just focusing on yourself. Another thing that I like to do every day is skincare. It's a little bit of a self-care activity that I like to focus on. I'm really into skincare because one, it's very like treat yourself in a way because you're just sitting there washing your face and putting all these things on it and really putting love and care into yourself because we don't always have time to do face masks, take baths, you know, like get our hair done, get our nails done. We don't always have time to do that, but you do have 10 minutes a day to sit down and, you know, wash your face and brush your teeth and put on like, you know, like your moisturizer and stuff. And that's really important to me and that's something that I focus on every single day morning and night the next thing that I always do is I do meal prep now because I have realized that food 
and my gut health is a really big trigger for my anxiety. So if I'm eating really badly and I'm feeling really full and I'm feeling very sluggish, it does make it hard to be active, which is something that I truly love to do. And it also makes it harder to be motivated and really work you know, like when I'm working or if I'm working on something, it makes it hard to want to do that because what tends to happen when we overeat or we eat bad for us foods, or at least for me, I get really lazy and I just want to lay around and that feeling, what tends to happen is the things that I need to get done and the things that I want to get done compound and it makes it very daunting and it makes it very you know, discouraging. And there's, once the list starts piling up for me, that's when I start getting overwhelmed. And that's when everything kind of falls to the wayside and I get super depressed. And then when I have enough energy, I get everything done at once, but it does tend to set off my entire routine. So I try to make sure that, I don't know, I'm eating good food so that I have the energy to get done what I need to do. And the last thing that I do that I have been doing daily is going to the gym. Obviously I've been talking about it in my vlogs and stuff and I don't, I'm not doing it to lose weight. I'm not doing it for anything other than I want to feel strong. So growing up, I am one of nine kids or was one of nine kids. My oldest sister passed away. But for me, growing up where I grew up and having the friends that I had and having the family dynamic that I had, I wasn't raised to necessarily be like dainty or super feminine or anything like that. And I didn't struggle with that identity until I was in high school. When I hit high school and I got my first real boyfriend, I wanted to be more feminine. I wanted to wear makeup, which obviously I still do. I wanted to wear dresses and heels and things like that. And while I still can do those things, my focus has kind of shifted to I want to be strong. So I want to be able to play sports. I want to be able to lift weights, which is what I do most days of the week. I just want to be strong and I don't want to try to force myself to fit into a bubble but also working out whether it be any kind of cardio which I don't normally do or just lifting weights with my friends or just having the motivation to go to the gym that really helps with my mental health because once I'm done my endorphins are going and they do last for a really long time so normally when I go to lay down for bed is usually when my anxiety or my OCD is the worst um, because I have tinnitus and that's I, it's like a recent thing that I have discovered, unfortunately, and it's really easy to ignore, but if you have it, you understand that when you become self-aware that you have it, it does bring you a lot of anxiety. So when I lay down, that's when it is the worst for me. And working out exhausts me to a point where I'm able to sleep and I'm able to sleep better. And that goes full, full circle into getting enough sleep to start my day off right. When it comes to mental health, those are the things that I do to kind of, that's like my routine. That is what I try to stick to to make sure that I, when I feel very anxious or when I feel very down or I'm feeling, you know, very upset about something or discouraged or hopeless, whatever it may be, I go back to these things because they are a routine. Because what tends to make my anxiety really bad is not having the answers, not knowing what's going on, not knowing what's going to happen. But I know every single day how my day is going to start and how my day is going to end. It's just the shit in the middle. And if I set myself up for success, success the night before and into the morning, then it tends to make the unknown a lot easier for me. So I hope this video was helpful. I realize that we are all going, going, going all of the time. And while that is fine, it's not a necessity. It's not something that we always have to do. You can take time for yourself and you can take time to just relax and not worry about all of the projects you need to do and realize that your anxiety and dealing with that is more important. But enough rambling from me. I am sorry that there wasn't a vlog. I know none of you are going to be particularly upset about that because you kind of understand, but I just feel like a lot of us are going through this right now. I feel like majority of my friends are a little bit older and trying to figure out kind of where they go in life and their body is feeling the strain of constantly working on projects and constantly trying to do the most and be the most and be successful and we need to realize that it's okay to take a step back and really focus on yourself. So I love you guys. I hope this video is helpful. If you are feeling some type of way, I definitely recommend talking to somebody if you have any kind of health care or you're able to go see someone, I would do that. A lot of people, me included, unfortunately, have to figure out other ways because there aren't a whole lot of resources for us to be able to see somebody. But that's definitely something that I unfortunately don't have access to. 
So these are just my tips to making sure that I don't spiral and things don't get really bad. But yeah, I love you guys. I hope you are having an amazing weekend. I hope you guys are having an amazing Friday. I will see you guys in Monday's video and hopefully next weekend I will be able to have a vlog up. But I love you so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Wow, 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 wow,